Hi guys, uh, my name is Matt Houlihan. I'm one of the club directors here at Beta Bay Volleyball Club. Uh, and my job today is to be putting together the parent meeting overview video uh, that's gonna cover all the information in regards to our 2023-24 club volleyball season. Now, the reason we do this in a video format is because most of the time in years past, we've done it in person, in the gym, it's loud, there's lots of distractions going on. So you, it's hard to get all that information in one spot uh, and, and really retain it with all the other things going on. So we like to send it to you guys ahead of time so that you're well prepared. Uh, if there are any questions that you have, then you're able to ask it when you get there uh, and, and really give you guys some more clarity before you even walk in the gym so that you can just focus on hanging out and watching your son um, go through the process and, and hopefully have a, have a pretty good day. So uh, without further ado, just wanna give you a little bit more information about myself, my family, uh, Bay to Bay in general, uh, and our story before we hop into those details. So um, I started playing for the club, Bay to Bay, back when I was 12. My brother was on the very first Bay to Bay team that was ever founded back in 2000. Um, I played all other sports throughout the entirety of my life. Uh, you name it, I played it, except for volleyball. And my brother roped me into coming to a tryout uh, back when I was 12. And I wanted really nothing to do with it. And when I got there, uh, I, within the first five minutes, tried to set a ball and it slipped through my hands. It hit me in the face and I started to cry. And I tell the story every year during tryouts because as you can see, it was one of those things that has stuck with me since then, number one. But number two, whenever we talk about tryouts, we know how stressful of a time it can be. Um, and how taxing it can be and, and intimidating it can be. And we really aim to try and make it uh, a positive experience. We wanna welcome all these guys in uh, and make sure that they are seen and feel like they are getting a fair evaluation of where they're at uh, and hopefully providing them some coaching and some, some just more opportunities to play and have some fun uh, within this sport. Um, fast forward a couple of years, I graduated from uh, St. Francis High School uh, after playing for Beta Bay for those six years and was able to go on and play Division I Volleyball at University of the Pacific, which is where I met my wife, who also played volleyball at University of the Pacific. Uh, we then took over the club uh, a year after graduating. So then we were pretending to be older than we were, trying to help run a club that I had played for for many years. Um, and we learned a ton, uh, a ton by doing, a ton through failures, a ton through successes. We tried to make changes every single year to make this experience the best possible um, opportunity for, for young men going through our area to play, uh, both for the players, for our coaching staff, and for you guys as parents. So um, that's, that's what you see today is, has come from a lot of hard work and, and iteration uh, over many, many years. Uh, this is now year 10 for us being club directors uh, at Beta Bay, and, and we're super grateful for all the people that we've gotten to meet through that. So uh, without further ado, I'll get into the meat and potatoes of all the information, what you guys are really here for. Uh, beyond just hearing me talk about myself. So sorry about that. Um, I'm gonna get into the training and the practice schedule and the tournament schedule uh, about the boys volleyball season right now. So the easiest way to describe the boys club volleyball season is that it's one really long season, August, right? We're trying out August 19th, all the way until the first week of July when AAU National Championship is. So the fall portion of the season, which is August through January, our teams practice twice a week. We do Saturday and Sunday practices. So we've always practiced on the weekend because we pull players from all throughout the region, Sacramento, Monterey, the East Bay, up on the peninsula. Uh, and having our team practice on the weekends just allows for everyone to, number one, avoid traffic, uh, and number two, be able to plan accordingly. And so we have really well attended team practices throughout the entirety of the year. Uh, in addition to those team practices, because we don't want guys just to, you know, specifically guys that are in the, the greater Bay Area. We don't want them to have to go five days without touching a ball. Uh, we have a number of skills practices that take place on the weeknights. Our skills practices are unique. Uh, and it's one of the big things that I truly believe is super important within our club, uh, both as a culture piece and as a development piece that allows us to take really big steps and allows our athletes to take really big steps. What these position practices are is it is a skill specific and position specific. So setters practice, pin hitters practice, middles and liberos practice. So all of our guys, generally speaking, have a position uh, when they're a little bit older. Our younger guys maybe not have a set specific position yet, um, but they generally speaking kind of have something they're interested in. Uh, each of those sessions take place on the weeknights. Uh, we have our pin hitters and middles liberos go on usually gonna be Tuesdays or Thursdays. Uh, and then our setters are usually gonna go on Wednesday evenings. 
uh, and our guys are then able to book into uh, any of those sessions throughout the course of the week. What we do is a little bit different this year. We actually give all of our players a 15 session pack to be able to go and register on our website. So a pack meaning like, think of it like a ticket. We give you 15 tickets that you're able to then redeem on the online registration system to book into whatever session your son's interested in. Maybe he's a young player, 12, 13, and he wants to try all of them. Uh, so one week he goes to setters, and the next week pin hitters, and the week after that libero's, and the week after that middles. That's totally fine. He's able to book into whatever he wants to do, and if he wants to really focus on being well-rounded, that's a great play, great way to do it. For our uh, older guys, maybe it's a setter for 17s, and they really just want to get continuous setters reps all throughout the week, uh, every single week for the entire season. Great, they book into setters practice every single week, uh, and they're able to get all that training with our lead coach, Coach Ariel, for setters. Now that's the other piece. Uh, every single team is attending these sessions. Now we limit the number of guys that are able to book into it. It's between 60 to 70 guys per session. So you're gonna get our 18 year olds and our 12 year olds and our 14 year olds and our 16 year olds. All of them are in the gym at the same time at the same place. And it is awesome, right? So we're working with our lead coaches. We have our uh, 18 ones coach, Ryan Smith, who does the middles practice. We've got our 16 ones coach, Chad Gordon who does the uh, liberos and helps with the pin hitters. We've got our 17 ones coach, Ariel, who does the setters. And then you've got me, uh, the 15 ones coach, who's doing our pin hitters and helps with liberos and uh, pin, liberos and middles as well. So all of us are working with everyone in that group along with a number of court coaches as well that we get to interact, right? So those players are interacting with older guys, younger guys, different coaches, and they're able to kind of be a bigger part of the Beta Bay ecosystem rather than just living on one team in one island. Um, which is a big part of what we set, a big part of what we do. And you'll hear that kind of trend and theme throughout this video of us trying to do more larger scale events, larger scale things that bring all of our teams together, all of our families together, so it's a community. Um, and so that's a big piece of what we try and do throughout the course of the year. So the next part of the fall season is gonna be our competition schedule. Now for competition schedule, all of our teams participate in the same events. Every one of our teams will do the NCBA Power League, which is about five weekends uh, worth of competition. We have uh, a couple one day events, which we call Power Leagues one through four, I believe. And then we have two two day events, which is gonna be our Power League qualifier and then our Power League region championships. So those events are all local. They're gonna be from Sacramento down to San Jose, to Santa Clara, San Mateo, uh, just depends on the weekend and the NCVA sets those uh, sets those venues and sets those schedules for us. That is a huge focus on development for our teams, for our coaches. We don't care if we win, lose, draw everything in those events. Our whole goal is to push every team to the highest level they can during that time of the year. So Power League is all about our ability to really get better as a team, to allow our coaches to kind of see which different lineups fit. Uh, it's in our sense, in our idea, it is a long day of practice. Uh, and then we have three travel events, three travel tournaments. And these are the bigger scale events um, that are gonna be in, you know, these are gonna be flights and hotels and all of those things that go along with it. There's three events in the fall that we will travel to. The first one is gonna be in November. And that's gonna be the Chi-Town Challenge. Uh, the weekend for the Chi-Town Challenge is gonna be November 11th through 13th. Now, last year they had it the weekend right before Thanksgiving. And so travel was super hectic, as you can imagine. Uh, and so flights were expensive and hotels were hard. Um, they bumped it up one week uh, ahead of that. So it's now two weeks away from Thanksgiving uh, for the Chi-Town Challenge. That's a three-day event. It is a Saturday through Monday tournament. Um, all of our travel, which we'll talk about in a bit, uh, we'll give you a rundown on what that looks like for us for hotels and flights. That's coming. Uh, the next month in December, we then will compete down in Southern California. It's almost certainly gonna be at the Los Angeles Convention Center again. That hasn't been confirmed by SoCal Cup, uh, but their director told us about 95% of the way there. Uh, that's gonna be on December 8th through 10th uh, in Southern California. And then the cap off of our fall season is the SoCal Cup uh, MLK Championship. That's over the MLK weekend, which is January 13th through 15th. That tournament ends the fall portion of our season Reminder, it doesn't end your season. You're not done there. That starts the break point uh, for our high schoolers uh, and they will then return back into the summer. Our summer season begins uh, in the middle of May. We'll have a team add-on day, basically forming new teams for players that picked up volleyball after the high school season uh, and any filling any open spots on our current teams for the summer. 
our summer season is an impacted season. It's about seven weeks long, uh, and we practice four to five days a week in preparation for the AAU National Championships. That's the end-all, be-all tournament for us, right? That's what we're preparing for every year, kind of the, the finishing, finishing point where we get to measure up against all of the top teams from across the country. Uh, so in the summer, when we get going after our team, team add-on day, the teams will practice four to five days a week. We'll participate in two local events. We do our Grassman tournament, uh, which is an outdoor grass volleyball tournament. And then we do our uh, Beta Bay in-house tournament, which is kind of our tune-up tournament that is all of our teams compete against each other. We bring in our local pro teams, some adult teams, some Stanford guys, and we make some older guy teams for them to come play and compete in. Uh, and we do a one day event to kind of allow our newcomers and our guys that are returning back from high school to kind of get back in the swing of a club tournament. Uh, we'll then go down to SoCal one more time uh, for the SoCal Cup uh, showcase. That's going to be over Father's Day weekend. The date isn't f uh, completely firmed up yet, but it's usually like the June 15th through 18th range. Um, and then we'll do the AAU National Championship, which is going to be the first week of July. Uh, there is conversation from AAU this year about splitting the age groups up. So basically doing two waves, for example, like 18, 16s and 13s and 12s together. And they would go July 1st through 4th. And then the other age groups would go July 5th through 8th. Uh, that's not yet finalized and confirmed on their dates, uh, but they have told us to be prepared for that to be coming out soon. Uh, so just giving you reference there. Obviously, whenever we get anything on those details, dates for booking flights, uh, all those good things, we, we communicate it in advance, which is a good segue into the travel portion of club volleyball uh, and giving you guys some of that information. Now, travel for club volleyball is separate from our club dues. We'll do club dues next, so just an FYI, that's coming up. Um, but for travel, any of our travel events that require us to travel out of the region, so uh, not Sacramento, not San Jose, not San Mateo, but Chicago, Southern California, anything along those lines, we do two things in particular that are a little bit different. Number one, we're gonna set a travel day for all of our teams on when they need to arrive to the actual city that the competition's being played in. Um, so most of the time for like Southern California or Chicago, we set that as one day before. Uh, for AAU National Championships, depending on how they break out those age groups, uh, we may be having teams come two days early just to number one, adjust to the times, time difference. And number two, it allows us to then get one practice in Orlando ahead of time as just kind of a, a kick the rust off the tune up uh, before that final event. Uh, but again, depends on what they give us in terms of the dates and the waves there. Uh, the other part is all of these travel events, we have to do what's called stay to play hotel contracts. So we have hotel contracts that we get booked into that allows us to then get into the close hotels that are walking distance. But all of our teams have to book through the specific links in order for us to gain access into the tournament. So we as a club handle all of that. We book all the hotels, we get all the hotels reserved, and then we send you a link that you then have to go in and you know book your rooms or rooms if you're booking multiple rooms. You, you pay for those separately on your own, put in your own credit card information, all that good stuff. We send you in the onboarding once we have it uh, with the link, uh, and then we send the information on when the travel date is. For any day that we're returning, we also set ground rules. Basically think about it like this. If it's a last day of play at a SoCal tournament, um, say on the January tournament, for example, when the last day of play is Monday, January 15th, we always set a no earlier than 6 p.m. deadline for flights. So you always wanna book after 6 p.m. because the last day of play at a tournament, you just never know when it's gonna end. Sometimes things get pushed back late. Uh, and you just need to be able to get to the air. You wanna give yourself plenty of time to get to the airport. Um, and normally the last matches are scheduled uh, no later than 3 p.m. Uh, but of course, if things get delayed and pushed back a little bit, the 6 p.m. buffer is usually, usually enough to make sure no one has to miss any games to try and go make their flight. Uh, again, we include all that information uh, through our onboarding process as well uh, when you make a team. Next up, we have our club dues. Uh, club dues are the things that's gonna cover all of our practice time, our coaches' salaries, the travel, all the things that go into running this club. Uh, this is where club dues comes in. 
And for this season, for all of our teams, since everyone attends the same tournaments and everyone has the same amount of practice time, uh, our fall season club dues are $3,700, so $3,700. Uh, and then our summer season dues are $1,700. We split the club dues, rather than making it be one large payment up front, we split the payments into two, a fall portion and a summer portion. Uh, again, as a reminder for these, for this season, when you make a team uh, for Beta Bay during an August tryout, you are on the team all the way through to the summer as well. So in total, the uh, total club dues cost comes out to $5,400 for all of the club dues portion. The things that are separated out are travel, which we've already discussed, and then our uniform dues. The reason we separate our uniform dues, which are $400 out, is because we do a three-year uniform cycle. That basically means that when you purchase uniforms this year, uh, your uniforms are then good for the next three seasons. So rather than making you buy uniforms every single year and having to swap it out, we keep the same uniform package for three seasons, uh, which then allows all of our families to then just have to purchase that once. Obviously, if your son grows, which we highly encourage, and needs to get something larger, we do a reorder form where you're able to purchase different items uh, or replace different items as you go throughout kind of the course of seasons. Uh, but this then just allows not have to bake in extra extra cost when we don't need to. So this year is the first year of our uniform cycle. Uh, I'll give you a sneak preview right below. This is probably like the only part of the video that your son will be interested in. Uh, but here's the sneak preview of, uh, of our uniforms for the upcoming year. I'll give you five seconds here. All right, now for the payment options. Uh, we have two options that we do for collecting our club dues and uniform dues. The first option is you're going to get an invoice from QuickBooks through our through our QuickBooks provider uh, to do a bank transfer for no fee. There's no transaction fee when we do this. So basically you get an invoice and then you're able to pay, typing in your bank information. It's kind of like writing an e-check to the club, but then we don't have to do the whole hassling and picking up checks and all that good stuff. Uh, the second option is you're able to do a credit card. So you can pay through PayPal uh, and use your credit card. We do add the 2.9% transaction fee that we have to pay uh, into that. So there's gonna be an additional cost uh, on that 3,700 to cover the transaction fee. And then within that as well, you can also set up a six month payment plan through PayPal. Uh, so it's an interest-free payment plan, but you also will then have to pay that 2.9% PayPal fee that we have to pay. Um, so the cost goes a little bit higher. Um, but basically you have those options for either doing zero transaction fee and doing the e-check, uh, or you can do it through your credit card or set up a six month payment plan using PayPal as well. During the fall season, we will have four main practice locations. Our first location is Foothill College in Los Altos. Our second location is Mission College right off of 101 in Santa Clara. And then our third one is West Valley College in Saratoga. That's also the home to our beach club where they have six beach courts. And then our fourth location is Campbell Community Center in downtown Campbell. Now you can take a look on our website right now under our indoor volleyball tab. There's gonna be a travel team calendar button. You click on that and you can see all of our team's calendars listed uh, ahead of time. So you can see exactly when they're practicing and where they're practicing uh, for months in advance. So you're able to kind of see there's a ton of practices on there. Uh, we utilize so many different gyms. So we get so much more space uh, to allow us to train, to practice uh, and develop over the course of a season. So take a look at those calendars uh, and make sure you kind of see how that would balance within your family schedule. We know we've got lots of things going on for families in the Bay Area uh, and we do our best to kind of work around that uh, in those schedules. The last thing I'm gonna go over with you guys is our outdoor volleyball programs. Now we have two outdoor programs. These are the things that we call the secret weapon of our training. Uh, we have beach volleyball and we have grass volleyball. Both of these are amazing training tools for our indoor players. The majority of guys that are in both our grass and beach clubs are also on our indoor travel teams. The reason being is because it allows our athletes to number one, get another <clears throat> day of practice, another session of practice throughout the course of a week, uh, but it also allows our guys to work on every skill. Right? Just like we talked about with the skills practices, where if you have a younger player who wants to kind of hit all the different sessions to kind of see what they like, what they enjoy, Grass volleyball, beach volleyball forces you to do all of the skills. In the course of a rally, you have to pass, set, hit, play defense, block, serve, everything, right? And so you develop your all around volleyball game. You learn vision of the court. You understand how to defend better, uh, how to move. You're adding in a different environment that you're training on. So it adds in a little bit of resistance as well. So there's a ton of benefits that come from our outdoor volleyball programs 
we will have two more tryouts for both our grass and our beach tryout. These are our makeup tryouts uh, that will take place. I'm gonna go ahead and put the dates right here down below. Uh, it's gonna be on, for our beach club, it's gonna be the 27th of August, so the following Sunday after our indoor tryouts. Uh, and for grass club, it's gonna be the Friday the 25th at Willow Glen High School. So both of these programs are big, big tools for us in terms of training and developing. They always work around the indoor schedule, so you'll never have a conflict with your indoor team practices and the outdoor club practices as well. So they're all very supplementary. If there's a tournament uh, on a Saturday, Sunday for beach club, we won't have beach club practice that week. It just kicks back to the following week. Uh, and so it's some really cool opportunities again to see the entire club uh, together. You have all those ages mixing together and playing and training uh, and working on the same things. Uh, so just another really cool opportunity to get more Bay to Bay gear, to get more Bay to Bay training, uh, and just get another opportunity throughout the course of a week uh, that builds up uh, over the course of a season. If you made it to the end of this video, just wanna say thank you, I appreciate you. Uh, we are super excited to get your son into the gym on Saturday for tryouts, and we're looking forward to the opportunity of getting to work with him over the course of a season. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us, uh, and we'll see you guys soon. Thanks.